how to slow down heat. Um, we're going to start just looking at a few questions um, that we've looked at before. Um, first question, how do you stop heat flow? Next question, what is a thermal envelope? Next question, what is a heat loss form factor? Uh, next question, what can nature tell us about building a low energy house? And another question to think about is, are there any situations when you don't want high insulation and low form factor? Uh, that's something to think about. I'm just going to answer some of these questions now. We're just going to look back on them. The first question, how do you stop heat flow? You can't. You can only slow it down. Uh, next question, um, thermal envelope. So we, if we're looking at a building or a house, we need to be able to kind of draw a line around the outside of the building. And then we can decide which part is inside and which part is outside. And this means we can keep warm inside. We need to know where the thermal envelope is. Um, and then this is what happens to the heat. The heat starts escaping. Uh, we may remember this this fella, um, and the difference between the interesting part with this question is is comparing humans and lobsters, and comparing the warm-blooded humans. We basically have to stay warm, and warmer than the environment we're in. Cold-blooded animals. Uh, the same temperature as their environment, basically. Um, so for us, we need to keep our bodies warm. For cold-blooded animals, they don't. They can just stay the same temperature. If, if lobsters are swimming in the sea, they're happily the same temperature as the sea, more or less. Uh, we tend to have our skeletons on the inside, which is then protected by layers of skin and stuff, whereas cold-blooded animals often have their skeleton on the outside which is maybe um, something we should think about when we're building a building with insulation. Um, so probably we'll end up with something like this. Um, and we can calculate insulation. Um, if we remember from the equation, we need... Um, we need to know the temperature difference between inside and outside. If there's a higher temperature difference, um, we lose more heat or we gain more heat. Uh, we need to know how thick the wall is. If the wall's thicker, we lose less heat. If it's thinner, we lose more heat. And also we need to know the area of the wall. So if you've got a big area, we're going to lose more heat. If it's a small area, we're going to lose less heat. So um, we can also think about the U-value, and the U-value is very useful uh, because it means we don't need to worry about the thickness. The U-value will just tell us how much heat are we losing per unit of area. So the equation just becomes this. Um, it's the, it's the U-value times the area times the temperature difference. And we're going to talk about U value today. And what we what we're going to look at is um, what happens when you have two different insulators. Um, you may have a wall that has wood and then some kind of insulation on the outside of the wood, probably. Um, or you may have this situation where you have uh, part of the wall is made of one material, another part of the wall is made of another material. Now, um, if you're thinking about insulation, this so one of these may be wood, which is not a bad, it's not a good insulator, but it's not a bad insulator. And insulation materials which are much better than wood. Um, so if, if you have a choice as far as insulation is concerned, which do you think is better? Which do you think will give us a, a warmer house? 
should we have the um, insulation in series? So we've got um, a layer of wood and a layer of insulation, or can we put wood here and then insulation here? Um, have a think. Notice that both of these are using the same amount of each material. So they're both half and half wood and insulation. It's just a question of whether they're this way or this way. Um, so while you're thinking about which one of those is better, let's just see how we would go about calculating which one is better. Um, and the calculation, another thing um, I'm just going to introduce is what's called the R value. And R is resistance, and it's the kind of the opposite of the U value. So for a U value, a low value is better insulation. A higher value is worse insulation. Um, so aluminium has a very high U value. Uh, polyurethane has a very low U value. For the R value, it's the opposite. So for R value, aluminium has a very low R value. Polyurethane has a very high R value. Um, so when you're looking at insulation in series, then you just add up the resistance. So if you have uh, one layer that has an R value of this and another layer that has an R value of this, you can just add them up as you put more layers on. Um, or to put it into terms of U, you need to add up 1 over U. So 1 over U equals 1 over U1 plus 1 over U2 and so on. Um, if you've studied any electricity, this is very similar to resistors in electricity. If you put a load of resistors together in series, you just add up the resistances. Um, so it's the same, it's the same calculation. Um, that's the R value then. So we can look at an, an actual calculation. Let's say that the um, this is wood on the left and glass wool on the right. So the so maybe structural layer is wood, which has a K value of 0.6. So this means if it's, let's say that it's 100 millimeters each, we've got a 200 millimeter thick wall, 100 millimeters of wood, 100 millimeters of glass wool. And the U value of the wood is going to be 1.6. The U value of the glass wool is going to be 0 0.4. So we can work out the U value for the wall by um, 1 over U is 1 over 0 0.4 plus 1 over 0 0.6. Uh, we can calculate this that U comes out about point, 0 0.32 watts per meter squared Kelvin. Um, so we can then take this, if we build a house like this, we can work out how big is the wall area and we can put the U value in. Um, we can put the temperature difference in and we work out how much heat we're losing. So that's that's in, that's for calculating in series. Um, just remember that number. Um, and how about parallel? So um, we'll do the calculation next. Um, before we do the calculation, do we expect this u value to be higher or lower? What do we what do we think? Do we think it's going to be is this going to be better at insulating than the series, or is um, series going to be better than parallel? Let's just have a just uh, just um, predict what kind of answer we're going to get before we do the actual calculation. Um, so for parallel, when insulation is in parallel, we basically need to average each of the U values. Um, so we work out how much area, what's the total area, how much of the area is this insulation, how much is this insulation, and then we just work out um, kind of like a percentage. Um, so again, this is similar to putting, it's similar, it's not the same, it's similar to putting resistance in parallel. Um, similar thing happening to resistances. Um, and the equation is similar, not exactly the same. So, um, insulation in parallel then, we have um, glass wool. This time, um, it's two, each part is 200 millimeters thick. Remember, we've got the same amount of the materials. Uh, so the glass wool U value is now 0.2. 
the wood U value is now 0.8. And there, the area is the same amount of area, it's 50-50, half and half, so it's a half of one, half of the other. So we now have a U value of 0 0.5, and um, this, sure enough, is higher. So um, which one is better? We, when I say better, I mean better for insulation, better for keeping our house warm. We're better to use series rather than parallel if we can, because this is going to be um, 0.32 rather than 0 0.50, which is which is quite a bit better. Um, we're going to use a lot less heat if we put the insulation in series, and we lose more heat if it's in parallel. Um, which one do you think is more useful in a building? Now, um, I've got a couple of pictures just to show you what happens in buildings. Um, this one is uh, construction of a wooden framed building, and you'll notice that the structure, the wall structure, has these wooden um, wooden pillars and wooden posts, and there are big gaps between them. And it would just be really sensible to put insulation in the gap between the bits of wood. So this is kind of going to end up in parallel rather than in series. Um, here's another picture of a house. It's not a very low energy house, but you'll notice they've got these doors and windows that they put in the wall. And of course, the doors and the windows are made from a different material to the rest of the wall. Uh, the roof is a different material to the walls. So what tends to happen in buildings is we, we don't always have the same material all around the walls. So we can't always do things in... Um, in series, even though it would be better. And what happens more often is we have some kind of compound insulation. So the wall structure is made up of some layers, some layers that have got bits of wood in, some layers that have mixed materials. Um, and this is the kind of situation we may get where if this is looking, probably this is looking down um, through cutting through the wall and looking down. So you can see the posts sticking out. And you can put insulation between the posts, um, and you can put a layer of insulation maybe on the inside and a layer on the outside. You may want to do that. Um, so let's do that then. And let's so let's try and work out what is the U value of this wall. Um, so here are some steps for solving problems. Um, I gave you some advice for doing calculations before. Um, this is uh, similar advice. So the first thing we need to do when we're solving a problem is, is work out what the problem is. What exactly are we trying to work out? And often when we're doing this, drawing a picture uh, will help us work out what we're trying to find out. Uh, you need to plan your strategy. So how are you going to work out this problem? Usually this will mean you need equations. So you need to find the equations first. Um, the equations are our tools. Um, once you've found the equations, um, the next thing to do is to find the data. So don't start with the numbers. Start with the equations. Start with the formulas. Work out what the formulas are. And then you can put the numbers in. Um, then you can calculate when you're doing this as I advised before, use lots of paper, uh, try and keep track of every step that you make, um, and then check, and then check again. Um, so let's just start off um, first of all by formulating the problem. And the problem we have is we want to find out um, how heat is going through this wall structure. So we can probably just think about one part of the wall, we can ignore everything above um, above and below those dotted lines and just think about one, one bit of the wall with um, one piece of wood. Um, so how do we solve the problem? Well, there are two ways we can look at this then. We could first of all think of the wall as um, lots of different layers then calculate the U value for each layer, which will be in parallel, and then put those in series. 
So we can calculate parallel first and then series. Um, or we can do, we can think of it this way round, um, parallel, um, calculating series first. So calculate what the U value for each part is um, for the heat going through the wall and then think about those in parallel. Uh, here are some um, of the actual numbers for you. So let's say that we've got um, every every one meter. Let's just think about one meter part of this wall. Um, and there's a there's a pillar every one meter. The pillar is a hundred millimeters thick. So the this middle part of the wall is is ninety percent insulation. Insulation. 100 millimeters has a U value of 0.4, and there's um, so there's 900 millimeters of insulation and 100 millimeters of wood, and the wood has a U value of 1.6. Um, those are the equations for working out series and working out parallel. Um, so A1 is going to be 100 millimeters, A2 is going to be 90 millimeters, and um, off you go and you work out, um, you go and try and work out one of these or work it out either way or both ways. Um, so we've got, that's the problem. That's the strategy. You've got all the equations there. Um, you've got the data there. Uh, try and do the calculations and see what you come up with. And um, let's, uh, let's uh, see what happens.